cigarettes and no you won't be asked to or the game we just saw how did all this come about carol oh this is great she's loved basketball almost since she was four or five years old had a basketball in her hands now you named her after you obviously and my and mother right and well, her and her mother right they're all named carol no uh, betty jean is her mother so we took her mother's middle name and, and my first name well let's uh, talk a little bit about that game uh gee it must be a, a tremendous uh feeling for you to have to go through the season i know i was a a parent of some people that played and it takes a, a lot of sacrifice on everybody's part that's right but uh, the parents were all great um, getting the kids to practice and uh, this has been really great all year it's been a great season for everybody you should be proud because she really played up a storm and it was her play during the, the about the middle of that fourth period that won the ball game for them that's right they came back strong there in the second half and that was great that third quarter now we have to move on uh, to the uh, championship game here congratulations to you Carol and uh, to your great ball club I know they're they're proud over in Schuyler County they're really proud over there we're proud of the community they really came forward and support these kids really now, great. now we have a couple of other interviews for you so let's go once again to Frank Bassoni thank you very much Jim we're with the head basketball coach of Chicago Christian Debbie Ribbons and Debbie uh, how excited are you right now waiting for this title go very excited the girls are very excited and I'm very excited what was the goal for Chicago Christian when this season started? This is it. <laughs> that, this, that describes it, doesn't it? Tell us about the style of play we can expect from Chicago Christian this afternoon. Well, we like to set up. We like to run our offense and zone. Defense, we like to set up, but we also press. So we, we tend to set up, but we also like to press. So we can do both. Is your press a man-to-man -man or a zone or variations? Zone, zone, zone press. Okay, we'll watch for that. Okay. Now, will you tell our viewers something about some of the players on your team? Go through some of the people and where they pull. Letting them use our place. Play. Okay, Debbie Nord is my um, center. She's a senior. She's six feet. She's been on the varsity team since she was a freshman, so this is her fourth year, and that adds a lot of experience to the team. Indeed. I have Judy Camp, who is another senior. She's a forward. She has a beautiful shot from the outside, and she being another senior. Sue Davids is also a senior. She's a forward, and nice inside moves. Tell us about uh, the problems that Quincy Notre Dame is going to pose Chicago Christian here in this title game. We have a great defense, and we're not going to let anything on inside. But what we're going to have to watch for is that Quincy has nice outside shooting, and we're going to have to watch that. What should be a factor that, that would be a key to your mind in deciding who's going to win this game? Oh, boy. Well, we got to come out aggressive. We can't let them, you know, get the first free shots, and I know we won't let them do that. How about the whole tournament as a, as a whole? Talk about the experience of coming to Champaign as young as you are, bringing a team here, and, and that sort of thing. Well, we were upset last year. We had a record 16-1. and one. We lost our regional championship game to Lamont, and ever since that day, these girls have wanted to get down here. Well, I don't blame them. They have a fine uh, team, and now you're going for the whole thing. And uh, right. I'll tell you, uh, this is this is what it's all about. And I know that there's an awful lot of fans in the stands that have supported you all along. They have. Okay. They've been great. Thank you very much, and good luck to you. Thank you. We'll be back uh, now. Coming up, uh, we'll have the head basketball coach at Quincy Notre Dame. This is Ivan Brown, and Ivan, congratulations Thank you very on much. getting here. Thank you. Tell us about your team. Tell us about the uh, individuals on your squad, and uh, and about their style of play. Well, uh, I have Connie trying to forward. Uh, she's very aggressive, uh, uh, big, strong girl, likes to take it to the hoop. Uh, about all my girls like to do that. Uh, uh, they're very strong defensively. That's what we're going to hope for today, that maybe our defense can shut the Knights down just a little bit and make things respectable. Uh, they're, uh, they don't mind hitting the boards. Uh, they uh, uh, move the ball around pretty well, and uh, I think uh, it's going to be a pretty tough ball game. I tell you, Ivan, this Quincy is title town USA anymore. Yeah, well. I don't know if we're as good as the, uh, uh, the senior high boys accordingly. Of course, they were just an outstanding ball club. What we've just basically had to do was sort of scratch and claw our way here. And now that we're here, we're going to enjoy it as much as we can. Talk about your opposition for a bit. Chicago Christian, what, kinds of, uh, what kind of team is it and what problems they present you? Well, Chicago Christian uh, has an extremely tall front line. Uh, they, they have us outmanned at every position underneath. Uh, they also have a fine ball handling guard out front. Uh, I'm just going to have to hope and pray that our guard can shut theirs down and uh, ho hopefully uh, force her into some bad passes so she can't feed the big girls underneath. And we're going to have to try to front the big girls as best we can and screen them off the boards and try our very best to limit them to one shot. What about the tempo of this game? What do you expect? 
Uh, I think it'll be pretty even pace, uh, uh, maybe a little slower than normal. I think maybe, uh, I'd guess maybe both teams might be a little tight. If one gets hot right away, it could be Katie bar the door. Chicago Christian's coach indicated that they like to do some pressing. How about Quincy? Well, we press to get here, but I'm not going to press. Not unless I have to, because this court's 10 feet longer, and uh, the girl, I've watched every team here, and they've uh, uh, they've really dragged after the uh, second quarter, uh, you know, from pressing. I was going to ask you that next about fatigue. What have your girls done now since the last time they played? Slept, and uh, I've had them uh, uh, lay around in the in the uh, in the hotel, and and uh, not to be running around places. We've uh, they, I've allowed them to swim and things like that to sort of loosen up, but uh, no running around or anything like that. We've been very strict. Ivan, I know that uh, there's been a lot of comment about the fifth year now of girls basketball in Illinois. What's your reaction to how it's progressed? Well, I think it's progressed along quite a bit. I remember four years ago when I started, things were pretty ragged and uh, you didn't see very much good play and uh, and also didn't see much fans wise. Uh, we played in front of uh, big size crowds, uh, sellout crowds from the sectional on, as a matter of fact. So uh, we're very happy with the size of the crowds and the kind of style of ball that's being played. And I think the more these teams uh, learn, the better off it's going to be. Well, good luck to you. Congratulations on a wonderful year and, and all the best in the title Thank goal. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you. That's Ivan Brown, the head coach of Quincy Notre Dame. We'll be back at the Assembly Hall in just a moment. Right now, one of your network sponsors, Country Companies Insurance. Back at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, I'm Jim Turpin with Frank Bassoni and Ann Penstone. We're about set for the title game, Class A, Quincy Notre Dame, a record of 28-3 going against Chicago Christian. Chicago Christian's record is 30-2. and uh, two. Now for the introduction of the starting lineups of these two ball clubs, let's go to uh, Tom Trent. But uh, Tom says he's not quite ready, so we're going to have to wait for <laughs> a few minutes or so. Uh, and Penstone, let's talk just a little bit about uh, th these two ball clubs. And you already said that uh, that uh, you thought it was going to be a kind of a slowdown ball game, and I, the coaches that we just uh, heard from also uh, verified that. Well, both these teams are very well disciplined, and I think that's that's it in a word. And the coaches have talked about that. Okay, we're going to have the uh, playing of our national anthem now and uh, the singing of it, so let's join and watch the color guard come out. Notre Dame 28 and 3 on the year Chicago Christian 30 and 2 two very fine ball clubs going here in the Class A championship game a reminder that we'll be on the air tonight for the double A championship and uh, please uh, be sure and uh, join us for that one. Quincy Notre Dame located over of course in Adams County city population there 45,000 their nickname is the Raiders and uh, 
for a Chicago Christian located up at Cook County, the nickname the Nighties. Is that it, Ann? That's what they call them up there. Okay, let's go to Tom Trent. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the people involved in our Class A championship game. First for the Knights of Chicago Christian High School of Palos Heights. Their record, 30 and two. The head coach of the Knights, Debbie Ribbons. Number 10, Jenny Halverson. Number 14, Ingrid Tegelar. Number 15, Nancy Graffoon. Number 20, Darlene Franzman. Number 33, Chris Smith. Number 35, Becky Kickert. Number 42, Sharon Mells. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Knights of Chicago Christian High School. At a forward, a senior, 5'11", number 21, Judy Kemp. Judy Kemp into the ball game, averaging nine points per game on the year. At forward, a senior, 5'11", number 30, Sue Davids. Sue Davis, her average, 13.5. Starting at center for the Knights, a senior, six feet tall, number 22, Debbie North. Debbie North, the team's leading scorer, her average, 19.6. Starting at a guard, a senior, 5'5", five, five, number five, Sue Cavanaugh. Sue Cavanaugh, good ball handler, her uh, average, 4.1. The other guard for the Knights, a sophomore, five feet four, number 32, Barb Schaff. And Barb Schaff, her average on the year, 6.6 .6 points per game. And now let's meet the Raiders of Notre Dame High School, Quincy. Their record, 28 and three. The head coach of the Raiders, Ivan Brown. Number 21, Joyce Benverlo. Number 22, Karen Wolf. Number 30, Mary Hobrick. Number 31, Kim Hessing. Number 32, Ann Rakers. Number 40, Darlene Venverlo. Number 52, Susan Weldon. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Raiders of Notre Dame High School. At forward is senior 5'9", number 20, Barb Nutt. Barb Nutt's average on the year, 9.8 points per game. At forward, a senior, 5'6", number 23, Donna Venverlo. Donna Venverlo, her average, 9.6. Starting at center for the Raiders, a senior, 5'10", number 24, Kathy Watson. Kathy Watson's average, 8.7 points per game. At a guard, a junior, 5'6", number 50, Karen Kowalski. Karen Kowalski's average, 3.6 on the year. And the other guard for the Raiders, a senior, 5'9", number 45, Connie Trine. And Connie Trine, the team's leading scorer with an average of 12.6. Quincy Notre Dame and Chicago Christian for the Class A championship. And the officials for this ball game, Steve Pavlik of Bloomington and Lynette Trout of Champaign. Loading into jump will be Debbie Nort for Chicago Christian. They're in the white uniforms for Quincy Notre Dame, Kathy Wasson, Quincy Notre Dame in uh, the yellow. We're all set to go. This is for the title. Tip is controlled by Chicago Christian. With it is Barb Schaff. That is Judy Camp and Schaff. Well, they got a hand straight man to me. Yeah, straight man to men. 
Judy Camp with the ball. Out front it comes. That's Debbie Nord. Underneath him going for the layup and made it, but it will not count. Sue Davis scored, but did not count. She was traveling before the shot. Interestingly, they pushed Debbie Nord up high, and I don't think they want to have her down there if you're from Chicago Christian. Inbounding the ball for Quincy Notre Dame is Barbara Nutt. She gives it in to Joyce Venverlo. Across the line, they come in a hurry. That is Venverlo, and now to Karen Kowalski. In the corner, Connie Prine. Kowalski, shot is up. Missed, rebound. Pulled out of there by Chicago Christian. Judy Camp on the rebound. She gets it off to Sue Davids. The Quincy Notre Dame, Trine's got to hit that, that jumper with hand in her face because she's going to have it there all day. Barb Schaaf gets the ball in the corner to Camp. Back to Schaaf now. Number five is Sue Cavanaugh. Driving to the corner, that is Schaaf. Plays it up left-handed, made it. Nice move and good shot. Two nothing, Chicago Christian on top. He's just a sophomore. Excellent move, switching over, puts it up with the left-hand underhand. That is Kathy Wasson getting the ball out front to Venverlo. Shot is up and off by Karen Kowalski. Rebound put up and missed. They fight for it underneath. But let's see what's going to be called, a jump ball. Chicago Christian on top here, 2-0. This has been Quincy's problem most of the year. They're a little bit tight right now, so I don't think it's indicative what their shooting percentage will be, but it has been low. Kathy Wasson against Sue Cavanaugh. Get this control by Quincy. That is Donna Venverlo with it. Donnie trying back to Venverlo on the right side, Karen Kowalski. Now trying. Team's leading score. On the right side, Connie trying underneath. Shot is up. Missed it. Rebound. Put for. Rebound is up. And rebound is good. A good job by Kathy Watson. Kathy Watson was young son here in the semifinal. She had a number of putbacks just like that one. Bring it back down and right back up on the turnaround. Score is tied at two. Barb Schaaf. This is Sue Cavanaugh underneath. Shot is up. Davis didn't make. Rebound though is deflected and a jump ball is called. It'll be Judy Camp for Chicago Christian. And moving in against her will be Connie Trine for Quincy Notre Dame. Camp's got the decided height advantage, but Trine's the volleyball player. I think you ought to watch her jump. There's a tip. They fight for it. Goes right underneath to Chicago Christian and laying it up and in is Debbie Norton. 4-2, Chicago Christian leads it. Straight 2-3 defense here. Out front with the ball, that is Venderlo to Kowalski, to Venderlo on the side now to Trine. Aaron Kowalski in traffic and is called for traveling. And the end of the ball game now is Mary Hobrick. For Quincy Notre Dame, she has replaced Kowalski. Bring it down as Barb Schaaf for Chicago Christian. The score is 4-2, Chicago Christian on top, 5.32 to go. We got Quincy now in a 2-3 zone. They'll change their defensive look quite a bit. They're worried about Debbie North. And she's being fronted down there by Barb Nutt. That's Judy Camp off to Barb Schaaf. Sue Cavanaugh lobbing underneath. Now Davis shot off the board and in. That is Sue Davids. Nice move, 6-2, Chicago Christian leads it. Sue Davids, an extremely strong player, and likes to go baseline. There, they almost threw the ball away, and then the ball was kicked. It belongs to Quincy. Jim, you'd think that Chicago Christian will have such a good height advantage along the baseline that Quincy Notre Dame will have to hit a lot, a high percentage of their shot. Connie trying to the ball, and the corner goes now to Hobrick. There's a jumper up, and the jumper is good by Barb Nutt. 6-4, Chicago Christian by two. Big basket for Barb Nutt. That's her first shot. It went in. She went up and over the big front line of Chicago Christian. As Barb Schaaf for Chicago Christian holding and looking on the side now. That is Judy Camp to Schaaf. Back to Camp. Lob underneath. Open under there is Debbie Nord, and then they had the ball to, uh, knocked out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. Inbounding it will be Judy Camp as we look at uh, Ivan Brown. And we're back with a man-to-man -man with a good sag. Long set shot, didn't make, rebound. Grabbed off there by Mary Hobrick for Quincy Notre Dame, and she brings it down. Gonna be called for palming the basketball. Mary Hobrick called for palming the ball. It belongs to Chicago Christian, leading in the game six to four. That is Barb Schaaf, 5'4", sophomore. Her average on the year, 6.6. She brings it across the line. Now to Sue Cavanaugh. That 
Columbus Sioux on the baseline, and she is called for travel. That's an example right there of Quincy Notre Dame's defense. They're outstanding fundamentally. They protect well, they help out, and they sag in addition. Darlene Franzman has come on now for Chicago Christian. And they're back in the zone. That is Halbrick for Quincy. Pass underneath, that is Lawson. Shot up and in. Kathy Lawson once again, and it's tied at six. Excellent move to get that shot off against that tall front line. 3.52 to go in the first period. With it is Barbara Schaaf. On the side now to Judy Camp. Underneath, they get the ball under there to Sue Davids, but it's knocked out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. Jim, in every one of these games, it seems like we have a scorer that averages six to ten points a game, jump out and get a lot of points. Kathy Wasson averaging eight might be the one in this one. With the ball, Chicago Christian out front with it is Barb Schaaf. Passes underneath, just a beautiful pass. Free for the layup is Sue Davids. Real good pass from Schaaf to Davids for the layup, and Christian leads it now, 8-6. That is Kathy Wasson for Quincy Notre Dame. Out front it comes now to Donna Benderlow. To Connie Trine for the jumper. Didn't make, rebound, goes to the floor, grabbed out of there by Chicago Christian. Look at the Sue Davids, who gives it up to Barb Schaaf, who brings it down. Barb Franzman, who's in the game now, didn't come back to the team until the second. She had lost herself beyond her knee, and she wasn't able to play until just a couple of weeks ago. Pass underneath intended for Davids, but they have a deflected, knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Chicago Christian ball. End of the ball game for Quincy Notre Dame will be Kim Hesse. A timeout has been called here with 2.59 to go in the first period. Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame 8-6. to six. One of your network sponsors is the Calabag Research. Back at the Assembly Hall, I'm Jim Turpin with Ann Penstone and Frank Fasoni with 2.59 to go. Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame here in the first period, 8-6. to six. Jim, we have the uh, United Press International and Associated Press coaches all tournament teams we'll discuss in a little bit. There's a shot up by Sue Davids, didn't make, rebound. Quincy on the move in a hurry as Connie Trine now backs off with the dribbles, nothing develops on the break. Sabalda Hobrick. Nice pass underneath, shot is up and missed at that time by Barbara Nutt and the rebound is pulled out of there by Chicago Christian. Debbie North's been noticeably silent so far. That's a credit to Quincy Notre Dame's defense. They gotta get her in the offense. Barb Schaaf with the ball looking underneath. Good pass, shot is up, shot is good. Sue Davids again for Chicago Christian. It's now a 10-6 ball game. Davids has scored six of her team's 10 points. Hobrick in the corner, clears the ball out front to Connie Trine. It's deflected hit last there by Chicago Christian. It belongs to Quincy. Donna Venverlo will throw it in. Along the sideline, out front it comes to Connie Trine. That is Mary Hobrick to Trine. To Hobrick, two minutes to go in the first period. Shot is up and a foul is gonna be called underneath. It'll be on Chicago Christian and picking up the foul is uh, Debbie North. At the pass from Hobbitch down the baseline to Nutt, she goes up with Debbie North catches her on the arm. I think the coach was just talking to her to keep her feet down. She's tall enough, she doesn't need to go up on that. That's the first foul in the ball game on uh, Debbie Nord. Two shots coming up here. First one's up and good. That is Barbara Nutt. It's now a 10-7 game. Reminder, two to our viewers in the third place game, Rushville 68, El Dorado 63. Rushville wins third. Second free throw, finally fell in. Oh, it hung up there for a long time. 10-8 now, Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame. 1.57 to go, we're in the first period. Give it is Barb Schaaf. Lobs in the corner to Judy Camp. Now to Schaaf, and a little traffic. Bring it off to Judy Camp again. Out to Barb Schaaf for Chicago Christian. 1.41 to go for the period. 10-8 ball game, Chicago Christian leads it. Excellent defense here by Quincy Notre Dame. They're not being able to penetrate and get down. And Schaaf's having trouble, and she's their glue. That is friends. Back to Schaaf. 10-8 to score, 125 to go on the period. We're in the first quarter. There is Schaaf along the baseline in traffic, but gets it up anyway, misses it, but there for the rebound is Judy Camp. 12 to 8 now. Pass near the center court is picked out of there, and uh, let's see what's going to be called. Traveling is going to be called on Barb Schaaf. She sold the pass, just couldn't quite control it. All right, the ball <laughs> belongs to Quincy Notre Dame. 
things are heating up here as we go into the end of the first quarter. That is Hobrick getting the ball up to Venverlo for the jumper and didn't make. Rebound, pushed up and made underneath. That is Kim Hessing for Quincy Notre Dame. The turnaround jumper by Hessing. She and uh, number 24 have a good job of doing that. Mary Nett goes up strong too. Dr. Kristen leads it by two now. 12-10, 46 seconds to go in the first period. Lob underneath, just wide open for the layup, and it goes in. That is Debbie North. The part of a passer's skill is being able not just to get it there, but get it there at the right speed so that it's soft enough to catch one. That was an excellent pass. Quincy Notre Dame that is trying on the drive, and the shot is off the board and good. Let's see what the foul is going to be on. Barbara Schaff picks it up, and Barb got the worst end of uh, that in, in two different ways. She uh, got hit in the face and also got, uh, well, let's see. Well, they took the basket away. That was it. Took the basket away. And the ball belongs to Quincy Notre Dame to inbound. We're back live now. 14-10. Chicago Kristen leads it. There's the ball stolen away by Judy Camp, and then it's knocked out of bounds. Hit last by Quincy Notre Dame. One of the ways I think girls' basketball has changed in the five years in Illinois Basketball is an aggressive game, and now these girls are playing it that way. 18 They're seconds to go. First period, 14 10, Chicago Crystal leads it. That is Judy Camp. And now Shaft in the corner. Jumper is up and short, seven seconds. Quincy Notre Dame with the ball, now five seconds. Going to have to hurry. That is Ben Berlow with a long jumper, didn't make it. That's the end of the first quarter. Chicago Christian on top here in the title game, leading at the end of the first quarter by a score of 14 to 10. One of your network sponsors is Stuffer Chemical Company. Frank, you want to take a quick look at those all-star teams? Yes, the one selected by the coaches has on the first team Connie Trine of Notre Dame, Debbie Nord of Chicago Christian, Sue Davids of Chicago Christian, Mary Jane Duff, and Kelly Mason of El Dorado. That's selected by the coaches. A little different selected by the media. We'll get that. Second period underway, that is Judy Camp getting the ball off to Barb Schaff for Chicago Christian. Chicago Christian leads, but there's a turnover, picking it off as Donna Benberlo in a hurry. Schaff uh, cuts her off, though, and uh, you have to throw the ball out front. Jumper up, Connie Trine didn't make it. Rebound pulled down by Debbie Nort for Chicago Christian, who throws it to Barb Schaff. 14 to 10, Chicago Christian leads it. Seven and a half minutes to go for the first half. Ball stolen away there by Connie Trine. Quincy plays an outstanding man-to-man -man defense. Venberlo down the lane, shot off the board, didn't make, rebound to the corner. Donna Venberlo gets it back, hands it to Connie Trine. Pass underneath, shot is up and around and off. Rebound, shot up and deflected, knocked out of bounds. Good job defensively. Rejection there. In that first period, Kristen 7 of 13, 54%. Notre Dame 4 of 11, 36%. The turnovers are about even. Rebounds 8 to 5. Notre Dame on top. They made two of two foul shots. Quincy Notre Dame with the ball. There's Connie Trine. Can't hold on to it. Out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. Chicago Christian on top here. 14 10, 7.07 to go. Having a good time here. <laughs> With it is Barb Shaft. Still in the man-to-man -man here. In the corner, with it is Debbie North. Short jumper up and got it. They have to go to her offensively. Quincy Notre Dame has substituted so that defensively they can work on Shaft and Tyra out a little bit more. They've changed defense on the point guard. 16 to 10 now, Chicago Christian on top. Out front of the ball. That is Joyce Benderlo. Now to Trine. Benderlo to Trine. Baseline jumper, got it. Connie Trine, the team's leading score with a 12.6 average. First points in the game. It's now a 16-12 game, Chicago Christian in front. This is for the title in the girls' class A. In the corner, shot blocked. Good defensive work by Connie Trine. And she has the basketball, brings it down for Quincy Notre Dame on the dribble. And uh, an offensive foul called on Connie Trine. Quincy Notre Dame's having trouble. They're playing excellent defense, but they're not being able to make it count on the other end. Here we got Trine going in, lowers her shoulder in the boom, and gets the foul. First foul on Connie Trine. The ball belongs to Chicago Christian. Walking it down is Barb Schaff. Along the baseline, and traveling is going to be called there on Debbie North. That's the sixth turnover in the game against Chicago Christian. 
as Debbie Ribbons looks on, the coach of Chicago Christian. She graduated from high school in 1975. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> on the side with the Johnny trying lob underneath. And a jump ball is going to be called. It'll be Kim Hessing for Quincy Notre Dame. Now, in the ball game for Quincy Notre Dame is Barb Nutt. We've got trying with the ball on the left-hand side. She tries to go inside. A little bit of traveling, a little bit of action. We're going to get a jump ball. Karen Kowalski also back in the ball game for Quincy Notre Dame. There's a tip to pull by Chicago Christian. With it is Sue Davids across the line. They lead in the ball game, 16 to 12, 539 to go for the half. This is the Class A championship. With it is Barb Shaft. Off it goes to Sue Davids. Baseline drive, traveling. You know, Jim, uh, Ivan Brown talked to me before the game about fatigue, and he said he wanted to substitute, and then he didn't want to press, and maybe in the second half that'll pay off for Notre Dame. Seventh turnover against Chicago Christian. Mary Hobrick in the corner. Off it comes to Joyce Venderlo. Shot is up. Shot is missed. Rebound Judy Camp for Chicago Christian. Gets the ball off to Barb Schaff, who brings it down. Chicago Christian's got to get some more movement off the ball. They're setting their picks, but they're not getting clear on the screens because Notre Dame's coming through them. Bob deep in the corner. Passing underneath this wide open under there is David. Shot missed, though. Rebound foot for. And a foul is called on the rebound. See, so David was so alone, she forgot how to put it in at that point. Chicago Christian on top here, 16 to 12. A timeout has been called with 5.03 to go in the first half. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. For Chicago Christian, Camp has scored two, Nord six, David six, and Schaff has scored two. For Quincy Notre Dame, Nutt has two, Wasson has four, Hessing two, and Trying two. 16 12 ball game, Chicago Christian on top. Quincy Notre Dame with the basketball. That is Karen Kowalski in the corner. Donna Venderlo, shot is up, didn't make, rebound pulled out of there by Bart Schaff for Chicago Christian, and she brings it down in a hurry. Off the line she comes, 4.40 to go now. Quincy Notre Dame still in the man-to-man -man defense. That is Judy Camp to Schaff underneath, shot is off the board and didn't make it. Rolled around, fell off. Quincy Notre Dame on the break now. That is Donna Venderlo with it, gets it in the corner to Kowalski. Off it comes now to Hobrick. Her shot misses. Rebound. Punchy Notre Dame underneath. Traveling. Ball belongs to Chicago Christian. Quincy Notre Dame, I think, said the whole team in here in substitutes. They're doing just exactly what Coach Ivan Brown wanted to do. Keep them fresh and be ready for the second half. 16 to 12 ball game. Chicago Christian leads it. 4-12 to go for the half. That is Barb Schaff. Gets the ball on the side. Back out front now to Camp. That is Sue Davids along the baseline. Shot is up and missed it. Rebound foot four and pulled out of there by Karen Kowalski for Quincy Notre Dame. Quincy Notre Dame's doing an excellent job on the boards. They're only getting one shot by Chicago Christian. They're boxing out beautifully. And Quincy Notre Dame's not falling behind with some of their reserves in. That is Halbrick. Back out front it comes now. Donna Venberlow shot. Didn't make it. Rebound to the corner. And once again, there is Barb Schaff for Chicago Christian. But again, Quincy Notre Dame couldn't come back on the transition. They had the, the steal, but they couldn't put it up and count it. Lob thrown over the head of Sue Davids, out of bounds. Back in the ball game now is Connie Trine for Quincy Notre Dame. Also coming back in is Kathy Wasson. Kowalski goes out, and uh, no, Kowalski's gonna stay in, Hobrick goes out. Sixteen to twelve ball game. Chicago Christian on top. Three twenty-two to go. We're in the first half. Short jumper along the baseline, no good by uh, Barbara Nutt, and the rebound is pulled out of there by Chicago Christian. With it is Bart Schaff. Three oh six to go for the first half. Schaff deep pass underneath Camp. Shot up and good. Judy Camp on a good pass from Schaff. There goes the backdoor news. She can't come up for the ball, so she's going to reverse and go back the other way. Excellent move and nice pass. Here is Kowalski. Back out front it comes to Venderlo. To Kowalski, the Venderlo at the free throw line. Now Kowalski. Jumper along the baseline. Didn't make. Rebound pulled down by Judy Camp for Chicago Christian. I like the tough little sophomore guard, Barb Schaff, for Chicago Christian. She does a lot of things well, makes a lot happen. She's a 5-4 sophomore. 18 to 12 to score, Chicago Christian on top. 2.29 to go. Barb Schaff with the ball for Chicago Christian. Looking underneath. The 
jump ball is called. And Jeff couldn't find anybody to throw it to, and Donna Benvolo tied her up, so they'll jump. There is Ivan Brown, the Quincy Notre Dame coach, yelling instructions to his team. They're down in the game by six here, 18-12. Tip control by Quincy Notre Dame, Karen Kowalski. And the corner goes to Barb Nutt. To Donna Benverlo, right at the free throw line, missed her shot. And a foul is going to be called on the rebound, picking up that foul is Sue Davids. Sue Davids picks up the foul for Chicago Christian. That shot goes up by Benverlo, up from the top of the key, goes up short, comes off the other side. Davids was not in good position, and she draws the foul. Donna Benverlo will inbound it, gets it into Connie Trine for the jumper and got it. Good looking jump shot, Connie Trine. She's getting into her shot a lot more comfortably and she looks better going up than it's going in for. 18 to 14, Chicago Christian by four now. Two minutes to go for the half. Over the shaft, in the corner, intended it for Debbie Nort. Knocked out of bounds though by Barbara Nutt for Quincy Notre Dame. It'll be Chicago Christian ball. Sue Davis will inbound it. Sue Cavanaugh coming back in the ball game now for Chicago Christian. And uh, going out is Darlene Fransman. Once again, they try to inbound the ball to Schaff, and then it's knocked out of bounds by Donna Benverlo, and it'll be Chicago Christian ball again. This time they get it into Camp, who gives it to Bart Schaff, who is hounded there by Donna Benverlo. In the corner now to Camp. Shaft. 140 to go for the half. Baseline drive. Shot is up. Shot is missed by Sue Davis. Rebound. Donna Vindolo for Quincy Notre Dame. In a hurry. Barb Shaft though runs that ball down from behind. Good defensive work. She's been Good doing offense. that all tournament. She's outstanding. She's very quick and she's smart when she uses it. For a sophomore, that's outstanding. Sue Cavanaugh gets the ball to Barb Shaft. 120 to go now. She's on second team all state, both the coaches and the media. Each team charged with eight turnovers in the ball game so far. 18 to 14, Chicago Christian leads it here with one call to go and a timeout has been called by Chicago Christian. A minute and 12 seconds remain to be played. Maybe uh, we could take a look now at that Associated Press All-Tournament team. Well, Frank went over United Press International team that was selected by the coaches. The only change in the Associated Press is with Carol Johnson of Rushville coming on the first team rather than the second. So that reads that Connie Trine of Notre Dame, Debbie Nort, of Payless Heights, Chicago Christian, Mary Jane Duff and Kelly Mason of El Dorado and Carol Johnson of Rushville. Our second team is Barb Schaff of Payless Heights, Kathy Watson, Quincy Notre Dame, with Barb Nutt, her teammate, Lisa Whitler of El Dorado and Sue Davis of Payless Heights, Chicago Christian. Outstanding players all, good choices by both coaches and, and media. Country Companies Insurance and it's nearly 1,000 agents here in Illinois. Happy to be part of this telecast. Hope you'll join us for the AA title game at eight. There's a look at Barb Schaff chasing the ball down from behind and saves it to her teammate. Uh, that shows a good hustle. It looked uh, for a moment there that Donna uh, Benverlow was going to go for an easy layup. The difference in the game right now has been the outstanding defense of, of Quincy Notre Dame keeping them in because their poor shooting has been a problem. There's a place to ride if you have a comment. We'd like to thank all of you who have taken time to drop us a note, and uh, we appreciate all the fine remarks. There's the address to write to, Basketball 577, Bloomington 61701. Minute 12 to go, a jump ball, 18-14, Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame. This is the Class A title game, the double A title game. We'll be on the air with that one tonight at eight. Tip is controlled by Barb Schaff, here she is. Down the lane, good move, and gonna pump it up herself and made it. Barb Schaff, the 5-4 sophomore, pumps it in, it's 20 to 14 now. Jaff has scored four. Ryan had the ball stolen away by Judy Camp. Gives it back to Shaft. Chicago Christian with a six point lead and the ball with 48 seconds to go in the first half. Another beautiful pass, layup good. Sue Davids on the back door again. And Quincy Notre Dame wants a timeout here with 40 seconds to go in the half. The ball club is down now, 22 to 14. High school sports, something special, aren't they? DeKalb Ag Research and the more than 700 DeKalb dealers are glad to be co-sponsoring this Class A championship. DeKalb's hopes you'll join us next, uh, well, tonight for the next game. It's 8 o'clock, and it's the double A title game. That's Elk Grove and Peoria Richwoods. 
This is a good ball game. It's uh, not quite as fast, Ann Penstone, as the first one. We saw a couple of pressing defenses in that ball game, one by Rushville over El Dorado. But this one is a little more deliberate and consequently the score a little lower, 22-14. Right now, Coach Ivan Brown is not real happy with Quincy Notre Dame. It's six unanswered points by Chicago Christian. All on turnovers and good defense by Chicago Christian. Quincy Notre Dame back on the court. Chicago Christian out there now, and we're all set to play the final 40 seconds of the first half. Chicago Christian leading here. Came into the ball game. Chicago Christian with a 30 and two record. Quincy Notre Dame 28 and three. That is Karen Kowalski for Quincy Notre Dame. Out front, Barry Hobrick. Kowalski in the corner to Connie Trine. Now they almost had an over and back call, and they did have an over and back call. Good call by the official. Third right here in front of us, Mary Hobrick stepped on the line. The ball belongs to Chicago Kristen. 25 seconds to go in the half. Back in the ball game for Quincy Notre Dame. Number 23 is Donna Venderlo, 5'6 senior. Barb Schaff brings it down for Chicago Christian. 20 seconds to go. With it now is Sue Cavanaugh. And she's tied up by Barb Nutt. You can't underestimate the job Barb Nutt is doing. She's at about a five inch height disadvantage against Debbie North. She says an outstanding job denying her the ball and when she gets it, trapping her in the here's the jump ball as a result. 15 seconds to go now for the half. There's the tip, but it's controlled by Quincy Notre Dame. Kathy Watson gets the ball to Benverlow. Donna Benverlow, six seconds to go. Jump shot blocked in the corner. And Barb Schaff chases it down. She's going to shoot a long jumper and almost made it. Hit the rim and the board. So that's the end of the first half. Chicago Christian on top here. The score is 22 to 14. One of their network sponsors is the Cowbag Research. Frank Bassoni and Ann Penstone. We're going to have the presentation now of the medals and the trophies for the third and fourth place people. Let's go to Tom Trent. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the third and fourth place teams and individual awards for the 1981 Class A Girls State Basketball Tournament. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the fourth place team will be Mr. Gail Borton of Frankfurt High School in West Frankfurt, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors and Mr. Don Robinson, who serves the IHSA as an assistant executive secretary. At this time, we'd like you to meet the Lady Eagles of El Dorado High School, who finished the 1981 season in fourth place with a final record of 26 wins, only six losses. The principal of the school is Glenn Dexter. The head coach, Wendy Kamuka. Assistant coach, Mary Stevens. Number 10, Mary Jane Duff. Number 25, Cindy Long. Number 13, Lisa Whitler. Number 32, Rhonda Ego. Number 31, Kelly Mason. Number 14, Jane Abel. Number 21, Karen Anderson. Number 12, Belinda Bean. Number 11, Brenda Burton. Number 23, Toby Heiss. Number 22, Terry Kelly. Number 15, Sue Van Hooser. Manager, Mary Pat Riles. Manager, Lisa Baird. And manager, Cindy Davis. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the third place team will be Mr. David Turner of Porta High School in Petersburg, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors, and Mr. Ray Callier of Aurora West High School in Aurora, who serves the IHSA as treasurer. At this time, please meet the Rockets of Rushville, who finished the 1981 season in third place 
A final record of 27 wins, only five losses. The principal of the school, Vernon Spree. Head coach, Vicki Green. Assistant coach, Bev Eck. Number three, Lori Fitzgerald. Number 10, Cindy Grafton. Number 14, Penny Brooks. Number 15, Angie Moranville. Number 21, Teresa Reynolds. Number 24, Diane Smith. Number 25, Carol Johnson. Number 32, Sandy Sutherland. Number 33, Mary Yaki. Number 41, Joni Crane. Number 45, Pam Runkle. Number 53, Melanie Bullinger. Manager, Tammy Smith. Manager, Susan Reynolds. And manager, Linda Sides. Now the fourth place trophy will be presented by Mr. LeVere Astroth of the Illinois High School Association who serves as executive secretary. Will head coach Wendy Kamuka step forward to receive the fourth place award along with the captains from El Dorado. Now the third place trophy will be presented by Dr. Nicholas Manos of Niles West High School in Skokie, who serves the IHSA as a member of the board. Will head coach Vicki Green and the captains from Rushville please step forward. third and fourth place winners, big hand. So that one of your network sponsors is Stuffer Chemical Company. Houston leads Quincy Notre Dame 22 to 14. A look at the scoring for the two ball clubs. First of all, for Chicago, Kristen Davis has scored eight camp four North six and Shaft for nobody in serious foul trouble for Chicago Christian. And now for Quincy Notre Dame, this ball club uh, has Watson with four, Trine with four, Nutt with four, Hessing has two, and uh, Trine has uh, picked up one foul. That's it for Quincy Notre Dame. We're at halftime. Chicago Christian leading here 22 to 14. We'll continue our coverage of the Class A championship in a minute. One of your network sponsors is... A look at the team's stats in the first half. Chicago Christian, 11 of 23 from the field. Pretty good, 48%. But look at those shooting stats for Quincy Notre Dame. Six of 25, just 24%. Uh, rebounds, Quincy Notre Dame on top, 19 to 12. And the turnovers are exactly even at 10. We are at halftime with Chicago Christian on top here, leading 22 to 14 over Quincy Notre Dame. And a reminder that one of your network sponsors is DeKalbag Research. Back at the Assembly Hall in Champaign, I'm Jim Turpin with Ann Penstone and Frank Bassoni. Ann, any first half impressions? I guess when you shoot 24% from the field, that about tells it all. The toughest part for Quincy Notre Dame is doing an outstanding job on defense. They're getting the turnover, but they can't capitalize the other end and put it in the bucket. They're getting even, they're out rebounding 19 to 12 over Chicago Christian, who's a taller team, but they just can't put it in. Unless they can, it's going to be a tough road to hold the second half. Here we go. Chicago Christian's Debbie Nord against uh, Quincy Notre Dame's 
Kathy Watt or Barbara Nutt in to jump and a tip that's controlled by Quincy Notre Dame. That is Donna Benderlow with it. In the corner in a hurry. Shot is up, the shot is around, the shot is good by Kathy Fawcett. That's a good way to start. As much as they wouldn't fall, that one probably shouldn't have and did. So maybe the tempo here. 22-16, Chicago Christian with the ball on top. That is Barb Shaft. Pass underneath, the ball's deflected, knocked out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. Just started play here in the third period. This is the championship game in Class A. Judy Camp inbounds the ball to Barb Shaft. For Chicago Christian. She brings it out front, takes a look underneath, gives a good pass, deflected off the last home button, pulled out of there by Kathy Watson. And here's the first turnover that Quincy Notre Dame has called. Let's see if they can capitalize. They haven't been able to do the whole half. Before you could even say it, Connie Trine looked one way, threw it the other, and threw it out of bounds. So it belongs to Chicago Christian. I look to see them going a little bit inside Debbie North, taking a little stronger position so that she can get the ball against a smaller bar of nut. Barb Schaff with the ball, tries to pass underneath. This time, again, they deflect the lob, but this time Judy Camp picks it up. It's for Chicago Christian. Good drive down the lane. Didn't make it, though. Gets her own rebound in traffic, and she's fouled. Picking up the foul is Karen Kowalski of Quincy Notre Dame. Got Sue David on the drive. Nice drive. Double pumps goes up with an underhand. Gets her own rebound. She's probably the strongest girl on the floor. Turns around and gets hacked from behind. And pushed a little help to go towards the basket, too. So at the line, Sue Davids, 5'11", senior, average on the year 13.5. She'll have two here. Her team's in front, 22 to 16, 7.05 to go, third period. Rushville defeated El Dorado in the third place game. That's the first free throw attempt, now the second of the game for Christian. This one's good, it's now a 23-16 game, and the press is on for Chicago Christian. Donna Benderlo in traffic, but across the line, all right. Now there is Connie Trine having a bit of trouble. Gets it off to Karen Kowalski. She's free for the jumper and missed it. Rebound, though, pulled out of there by Chicago Christian. With it is Sue Davids, who gives it to Barb Schaff, and Barb brings it down. Davids has scored nine points in the ball game for Chicago Christian. That is Judy Camp with it, looking underneath. Ball is saved there at the last moment. They fight for it, and it's picked up by Cavanaugh, and Cavanaugh is fouled. That is only the third foul by Quincy Notre Dame in the entire game, right there. And Cavanaugh on the drive, tries to go right, goes around Connie Trine, starts to go in, take it up, and she's fouled in front, right across the hands by Barb Nutt. Barb Nutt picks up the foul. Her first at the line will be Sue Cavanaugh for Chicago Christian. Six and a half minutes to go in the third period. 23-16, Chicago Christian on top. She'll have one more. Five-five senior takes a look. Got it. 24-16, Chicago Christian. With the ball, Donna Benderlow up to Trine. And now to Kathy Wasson. Back to Trine. Benderlow to Trine. The Benderlow looking underneath. In the corner, that is Hobrick. Mary Hobrick along the baseline. Back to Trine. Down the lane. Good pass. Shot is up. Shot is no good, though. And the rebound is pulled down by Chicago Christian. Good pass by Trine. Sue David, on the, they moved her to a, a point guard position so she can have a little more mobility and do what she'd like to with the ball. Barb Schaff passes underneath. The ball's deflected, but picked up, and what's going to be called? Too long on the lane. Quincy Notre Dame man done a much better job defending against that lob in this third period. They were really stung by that in the first half. Luckily, they weren't hurt too badly because there were a number of key misses by Debbie Norton and Sue David. With the ball, Hobrick. Bounces the ball off the foot of Sue Davids, out of bounds. It'll be Quincy Notre Dame ball. 5.46 for the third quarter. Donna Benderlow will inbound it. Had the ball deflected, knocked back out of bounds by Debbie North. So we'll do it all over again. Donna Benderlow looking. In the corner to try. Jumper is up. Didn't make it. Rebound. Ripped out of there by Sue Davids. Off it comes to Barb Shaft. 534 to go in the third quarter. Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame 24 to 16 in the title game in Class A. Traveling is going to be called there on Sue Davids. And a timeout is going to be called here by Chicago Christian with 525 to go and Chicago Christian leading 24 to 16. 
One of your network sponsors is Stoffer Chemical Company. Recap what's happened here this morning. Elk Grove Village defeated Skokie Niles West 44-42. That was followed by Peoria Richwoods defeating Chicago Marshall 44-38. So Elk Grove Village and Peoria Richwoods will be in the final game tonight. Royceville won the third place game here over El Dorado. Here is Connie Trine on the drive, and a traving is going to be called against Connie Trine. That was a quick look there at Ivan Brown. He didn't like that call very much. Especially when the ball went in. 24-16, Chicago Crystal leading. 5-11 to go here in the third period. Barb Schaff with it. Had the ball deflected, but it's picked up there by Sue Cavanaugh, and Cavanaugh is fouled by... Donna Vimberlow, I believe. Right, Donna Vimberlow picks it up. Did you see one of my favorite fans there for a moment? There's the turnovers. 13 to 12, very close. A lot of turnovers for these two ball clubs. So they've been uh, victimized a little bit, Dan, by the turnovers and by uh, poor field goal shooting. Look at his part chat. Look around the outside. It's a 24-16 ball game. That's Darlene Fransman lobbing underneath. Good pass, three for the layup, and then missed under there by Sue Davids. Rebound foot for goes to the floor, grabbed down there by Quincy Notre Dame. Donna Vinderlo on the drive, makes a good move, lays it off the board and in. Oh, beautiful bit of dribbling. Very smart, heady play. She had her vision going so she could see everything out periphery. It was one on three she made that through. 24-18 now. Chicago Kristen on top, 4.23 to go. Been setting some picks up here for Shaft, but she's not making use of them. Now they're working the two pick down. Now we're going to Debbie North. Again, there's Barb Nutt on the outstanding defense. The, the taller girl keeps bringing the ball down to where Nutt can grab a hold of it, and uh, she, you know, she can hold it at a level that Barb Nutt can't reach if she holds it all the way up. Kim Hessing has come into the ball game for Quincy Notre Dame, as has Karen Kowalski. 24-18, Chicago Christian leads it. 4-16 to go in the third period. The tip is controlled by Quincy Notre Dame. With it is Connie Trine. Gets the ball off to Karen Kowalski. Back out front now to Mary Hobrick. Kowalski's gonna pump a long jumper and got it. Suddenly it's 24-20. Kowalski's first basket. Chicago Christian by four. 3.55 to go in the third period. Down the lane, Jaff. Good drive, lays it off the board and in. Mary, or Mark Schaff, the 5-4 sophomore. 26-20 ball game, Chicago Christian leads it. There's a foul going to be called on Darlene Franson. Got the hands up, she's moving in, she can't decide, and she draws the block. Ball belongs to Quincy Notre Dame, inbound along the sideline. That is Kowalski, long jumper again. Didn't make this one though. Rebound fought for and a foul is called on the rebound. And picking it up for Quincy Notre Dame is Mary Hobrick. 26-20, Chicago Christian leads it. 3.35 for the third and Barb Schaff brings it down for Chicago Christian. She needs to penetrate, she needs to look for the dump to North and to Camp and to Davids. She's stopping her dribble much too early. Shot is up and missed there by Debbie Nord, and the rebound comes off to Quincy Notre Dame. With it is Kowalski, Karen Kowalski across the line. Side to goes to Trine, back out front, bounce pass underneath, kind of forced it in there and uh, it's knocked away and picked off by Chicago Christian. Barb Schaff has it. A little too much traffic for that pass and uh, the turnover charge against Quincy Notre Dame. Down the lane again, Chaff plays it up and missed this one though, but the rebound is up and the rebound is in. And that is Sue Davids for Chicago Christian, making it a 28-20 ball game. Important trip down the court here for Notre Dame, they need a hoop. Davids has scored 11. But the ball is prime for 20 Notre Dame. She's gonna pump it up and missed it, rebound. A foul is called on the rebound, grabbing the, the rebound for 20 Notre Dame was Kim Hessing, and she was fouled over the back, and Donna Vinderlo comes back in for Quincy Notre Dame. That trying going up on the jumper from the right side. She's off a little bit to the left, and Kim Hessing is in excellent position throughout the tournament. So for Quincy Notre Dame. Going to the line is Kim Hessing. Thus far in the ball game, Notre Dame two of two from the line. I don't think they're in the bonus yet. Two of four. 
He got him up there and uh, oh, he said two, I think. Now they're gonna. Now they're gonna try to decide. Nope, it was a one and one, but not yet. They're not yet in the bonus. So instead of shooting the foul shot, they'll just get the ball out of bounds. Donovan Brillo will inbound it. As the ball slapped to the corner, knocked out of bounds. It still belongs to Quincy Notre Dame. That is Venderlo. Pass it on the baseline. Back out front of Cuffin. Shot is up off the board, no good. Hubrick, rebound, goes to the floor. That is uh, Barb Schaff with it. Lobs a fine pass to the corner and then off the hands and of her teammate out of bounds. Not able to control that as Darlene Fransman. There we get the coach uh, for ribbons from Chicago Christian. She and her husband are the coaching team there. 28 to 20, Chicago Christian leads it. There's Venderlo. Kim Hessig. Now Venderlo and Schaff are tied up. Well, this Barb Schaff, she's a 5-4 sophomore, just all over this court. She's the one you want the ball in her hand. She makes things run. She had it one on two here, saw the open person, got night pass just a little bit long. She's got excellent touch for a sophomore. Sue Cavanaugh, number five, back in the ball game for Chicago Christian. She has the ball now. Who gives it back to Barb Schaff. 157 to go in the third period. 28-20, Chicago Christian leads Quincy Notre Dame. That is Barb Schaff with the ball. In the corner now. Ball lost out of bounds, and it belongs to Quincy Notre Dame. 147. 146, 145 to go for the period. We're in the third quarter. Bendelow is in traffic, gets the ball to Trine. Trine back out front on the side to Bendelow. Back to Connie Trine. To Bendelow for the little short jumper and got it. Donna Bendelow makes it a 28-22 game. Chicago Christian by six. 121 to go. Chicago Christian's trying to pick down low and pull David and, and Nord out. Now they're switching. Oh, here goes the double screen for Nord. Pass was not a good one. And the ball is stolen away by Quincy Notre Dame. Coming down in a hurry is Hobrick all the way down. Lays it off the board and in. Mary Hobrick all the way down. Suddenly it's a four-point game again. Anybody's game here, Jimmy. Oh, boy. 57 seconds to go in the third period. With it is Jack. One to the right side. Still on the dribble. Bad pass. Deflected, but they get it back. And Schaff is down on the court and is hurt. And uh, what's the call? I don't know. I think it was three seconds in the lane. Must have been Schaff lying on her back. I guess. But a timeout was going to be called there, but nothing was called. 42 seconds. 28-24. We're in the third period. Chicago Christian on top here by four. Quincy Notre Dame with a chance to cut that lead to just two points. Big possession right here. If they score, they've got the momentum going in the fourth quarter. They'll only be down by two, possibly tied. Bembro out to try. 33 seconds to go. Perhaps they're going to hold for one shot here. Certainly looks that way. 26 seconds to go now. Now 23, 21. That is Connie trying. Chicago Christian on top, 28, 24. Probably move about 12 seconds and then go. Ben Verlo to Trine, 11, 10 seconds. And I have to hurry, Trine down the lane, short jump off the board, didn't make it. Rebound, comes back, shot is up, off the board is good. That is Mary Hawbrick again. That's the end of the third period, and we've got ourselves a great championship game here. Chicago Christian 28, Quincy Notre Dame 26, and one of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Country Companies Insurance and its nearly 1,000 agents not only are happy to be part of this telecast, but many other IHSA events, one of which is the Girls AA Basketball Championship tonight at 8. Hope you'll join us then. All right, fourth and final period. It's 28-26, Chicago Christian on top by two. The Class A Championship. The tip is controlled by Quincy Notre Dame. Over and back is the call. And a correct one. And the ball belongs to Chicago Christian. Sue Davids tries to inbound it. It's knocked out of bounds, though. It's Chicago Christian ball again. 
Well, they looked like they had it uh, well in hand just a moment ago, and uh, Quincy Notre Dame came roaring back to cut it to two. With the ball is Barb Schaff. Man to man defense being played by Donna Benderlo. Schaff in the corner, baseline drive, cut off, lobs it underneath, and a foul is going to be called. Good penetration here by Schaff. She's trying to look inside for Norton Camp. Just draws the foul, and they're going to get it out of bounds. Donna Benderlo picks up the foul. And the one and one coming up now for Barb Schaff. Her average on the year. 6.6 .6 points per game. She's 5-4 and a sophomore. Yeah. 29-26. Big free throws by a little girl. When Chicago Christian came off the floor, one of the girls on the bench looked at Barb Schaff and said, calm down, and that's the key right now. that one rebound pulled out of there by Quincy Notre Dame and a foul is called on Chicago Christians to Davids. The shooting for Chicago Christian 12 of 30 43 percent Quincy Notre Dame 12 of 30 32 percent rebounds just about even as are the turnovers. Quincy Notre Dame with the ball there's a bad pass stolen away by Sue Davids goes all the way down backs in Tries to go for the layup and loses control of the ball out of bounds. In the ball game now for Quincy Notre Dame is Kathy Wasson, 24, back in. And going out is Barb Nutt. 29 26, Chicago Christian on top. 7 27 for the game. Trying gets the ball in the corner to Hobrick. Mary Hobrick. Out front, Benderlow is free and missed it. Rebound, though, is up, and the rebound, uh, the shot is attempted and uh, missed. And Knocked out of the hands, actually, and they all scramble on the court. And guess who's on the bottom? Here goes the shot by Benderlow from the free throw line. Comes off. Watson's got it, but Schaff strips her of the ball and ends up with a jump ball. Ball belongs to Chicago Christian. Barb Schaff has it. Her team, Chicago Christian on top, 29-26. Seven minutes to go now. On the side, that it's Judy Camp. Stolen away by Connie Prime of Quincy Notre Dame. All the way down from the layup, didn't make it. And a blocking foul is going to be called on Chicago Christian. It's on Mary Schaff, or Barb Schaff, I should say. Got Camp with the ball. She's stripped of it by trying. It takes it all the way down herself. She's looking. She's got the open play on her lap, but she decides to go up for herself. Good call on the block. At the line will be Connie Trine. 55% free throw shooter, Jim. Her team needs uh, all of them here. They're down by three. She certainly is a pressure player. She's the one that put in the jumper at the buzzer to, to knock out Carlinville and bring them here to the assembly hall. Got the second one. It's a two-point game now, 29-27. Chicago Christian on top, 6.55 for the game. Barb Schaff brings it down against Donna Benverlo. Christian needs a clean possession here. They've got to score. They've had some trouble. How about that? Schaff right down the lane. It opened up for her. She went in for the layup. Sure, Debbie Ribbons will take that anytime. 31-27. Chicago Christian by four. Here's Hobrick for Quincy Notre Dame. Now trying down the lane. Shot off the board. Didn't make. Rebound. Schaff. Lost it to the floor. Picked up by Hobrick. Benverlo is free for the slip shot and made it. Donna Benverlo for Quincy Notre Dame. It's 31-29, Chicago Christian. Six minutes to go now. Here is Schaff. It's the ball in the corner. They work around the outside again. She goes down the lane. This time passes off in the corner to Judy Camp, and a foul is called as Mark Schaff passed that ball in the corner to Camp. She was fouled. Picking up the foul is Connie Trine. The timeout is uh, going to be called here by Quincy Notre Dame with six minutes to go. Chicago Christian on top by two, 31 to 29. One of your network sponsors is Stoffer Chemical Company. For Quincy Notre Dame, Nutt has scored two. Donovan Berlow is six. Watson six. Halbrick has four. Trine has scored five points. Uh, for Chicago Christian, Cavanaugh has scored one. Camp four. North six. David's 11 and Schaff has nine. And that is Barb Schaff at the foul line now. She misses and the rebound belongs to Quincy Notre Dame. With it is Donna Vinderlo. They can tie it with a basket here. Pass in the corner. 
Shot is up by Holbrook, didn't make it. Rebound pulled out of there by Judy Camp for Chicago Christian. 5.43 for the game. Chicago Christian leads it by two. That is Judy Camp to Barb Schaff. Looking underneath, now to Debbie France. Long jumper, it's good! Darlene Franceman from the right side. She has been free to take that because of the man-to-man -man of Quincy Notre Dame, but she hit that one all day yesterday. 33-29 is the score. Hubrick with the ball, up to Venverlo, to Hubrick, in the corner to Trine. Trine, nice move, shot off the board, didn't make it. Rebound though is up, and the foul called underneath. Kathy Wasson grabbed that rebound for Quincy Notre Dame, and she was fouled. There's Wasson with the nose of the goes up for the jumper. It's going to come off on the far side to Kathy Wasson, who has excellent position inside of Judy Camp. She's excellent on the putback and going up. She gets fouled on the play by Camp over the back. One of the few things that Quincy Notre Dame has trouble with in its game is foul shooting. Team 48%, Wasson 43. She'll have one more. Kathy Watson at the line. It's 33-29, Chicago Christian by four with 5-12 to go in the game. Kathy has scored six. Missed them both. Rebound, Chicago Christian. Jump ball on the rebound. It'll be Debbie Nort for Chicago Christian. And then against her will be Connie Trine of Quincy Notre Dame. it a couple of times and bring it out of there is Sue Davidson. She gets the ball off to Barb Schaff for Chicago Christian. Five minutes to go now. On the side to Fransman. And another jump ball is called. For Quincy Notre Dame, it'll be Kathy Wasson. And going against her will be Sue Davids of Chicago Christian. 33-29 Chicago Christian on top. And the jump ball is controlled by Connie Prime. Quincy Notre Dame's gotten almost 90% of the jump balls because they move so well off of the tip. With the ball in the corner is Watson. Back to Trine. Out front to Hobrick, to Venverlo, to Hobrick. To Trine, move down the lane, shot off the board and around and off, no good. Foul is called on the rebound. Well, Connie Trine's had some tough luck on her shots there. She made a good move down the lane. Give credit to Kathy Watson on the weak side, trying on the good drive through a lot of traffic. There's Kathy Watson again inside Judy Camp, the replay of the last minute. Judy Camp picks up the foul. That is her third. Free throws thus far, Notre Dame three of six, and uh, Chicago Christian three of seven. They can use them here, but she misses. And a jump ball is called on the rebound. Wonder what the assembly hall record is for jump balls. We've had a lot of them in this one, haven't we? Here we go. Trying against Nort. The tip is controlled by Chicago Christian. They lead it 33 to 29 with 4.31 to go. Rushville won the third place game over El Dorado. There's the ball stolen away by Wasson. Going down all the way for the layup and blocked from behind and foul from behind. Judy Camp picks up the foul. Here goes the steal by Watson. She's going down with the right-hand dribble. From behind, Camp's going to come up. Looked like a pretty clean block, but she's called for the foul. Kathy Watson at the line. She's had tough luck up there. Whether, whether or not uh, Camp fouled her, she did hustle and get back there and get her hand on it. She missed that one. She'll have another one now. This is a two-shot foul. It's 33-29 ball game. She's missed four in a row up there. She'll have one more here. 0 for 5 now, and uh, there's a foul going to be called on Connie Trine on the rebound, which will send Debbie North to the line for Chicago Christian. 4.17 to go in the game. 33 to 29, Chicago Christian on top. An advantage here for Chicago Christian. Debbie North is a 77% foul shooter. Very good. She's the team's leading scorer on the year. Her average is 19.6. She's considerably below that today, however. That gives her seven points in the ballgame. 34-29. One more for Debbie North. Got them both. 
He's everybody's all tournament center. 35-29, 414 to go. Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame in the Class A title game. That is Connie Trine for Quincy Notre Dame. The Hubrick. Hubrick shot misses. Rebound Schaff for Chicago Christian. Barb Schaff at 5-4 went high to grab that rebound. Excellent dribbling. Well, stutter step, excellent by, by uh, Schaff. Darlene Franzman for the jumper. Got it. Darlene Franzman for Chicago Christian is now 37 to 29 with 344 to go. That is Watson for Quincy Notre Dame. In the corner, that is trying. And she is fouled from behind. Picking up the foul, I believe, is Judy Camp. There's no foul being called. It was simply a missed signal. It's going to be out of bounds on the tip, on the block. OK, the ball below. <laughs> Ivan Brown doesn't agree with that call very much. All right, it's just a Quincy Notre Dame ball out of bounds. What happened was she signaled that there was a foul, but what actually happened, she meant, she called out of bounds and signaled foul, so there's a confusion on the court, but in actuality, it was a call to block. Well, whatever, it belongs to Quincy Notre Dame, whether it is Connie Trine. She drives, pumps it off the board and in. Good drive by Trine. 37-31 now, the lead at six for Chicago Christian. 3-23 for the game. A lot of time left. Mark Schaff in the corner to Judy Camp. Knocked out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. And I want to force the ball in right now. Camp forced it a little bit, and Debbie Norton didn't go for it. That's Camp inbounding it. Clears it on the side to Sue Davis. Davis makes a good move. Shot is up. Shot is missed, but she's fouled. I think we're starting to see a little bit of fatigue more than we are real injuries at this point. We got David on the drive. She's switching her dribble. She's got trying behind her and not in front of her, and she's fouled in the process. And she'll go to the line for two. Looks like her ankle's a little bit sore on that on their fall. Foul is on Barb Nutt, her second. At the line for Chicago Christian is Sue Davids. She averages 11 rebounds a game and shoots free throws at 65. 38-31 now, Chicago Christian by seven. Her average on the year is 13.5. Here she goes again. Rebound run down there by Connie Trine for Quincy Notre Dame. Three minutes to go now, so down by seven. Ball knocked out of bounds, a good hustling play there by Sue Davids. Sue Davids coming live here in the last three minutes. She's pulled down the rebound. She's gone to the hoop, and she just defensively deflected that ball. Good pass underneath. Got his forced up there, and an offensive foul is going to be called on Barb Nutt. We've got the drive coming in here. She's trying to go up strong. That's Mar Barb Nutt. Goes up and charges into Debbie Norton, who had a good defensive position. Chicago Christian with the ball and the lead. Inside three minutes now, 2.57. 38-31 ball game. With it is Barb Schaff. Off it goes to Darlene Franzman. Back to Schaff. Out front Franzman. 243 for the game. Schaff along the baseline. Foul. Picking up the foul is Barbara Nutt. And Quincy Notre Dame wants a timeout here. 2.39 to go in Chicago Christian leading 38 to 31. A timeout has been called. We'll continue with our coverage of the Class A tournament in a minute. As you see the turnovers in the game, DeKalb Ag Research and the more than 700 DeKalb dealers here in Illinois are proud to be part of these high school tournament telecasts. And DeKalb hopes you'll join us later tonight at 8 o'clock for the girls' double-A championship game. At the Lion Barb Shaft for Chicago Christian. Got it. Chicago Christian has utilized their coach's philosophy, which is they don't overcoach. They give a lot of the decision-making responsibility to the team, and they've shown that they can obviously handle it. 39-31 now. One more coming up, and she got them both. She's a good player. A lead at nine with 2.38 to go. It's nice to have her back next to you. There's a ball being stolen by Judy Camp. Off to Schaff, and Schaff brings it down. 2.27 to go. Judy Camp with the ball down the lane. Something's going to be called traveling, I believe. That's right. Traveling violation against Chicago Christian. Quincy Notre Dame with the ball. Need to score some points in a hurry. 
I think you'll see Trine take it to the hoop. Harris Hobrick to Trine, to Hobrick. Ben Berlo, Trine. Right about that, shot is off the board, no good, rebound. Hobrick has it, pumps it up, misses, and way up there again is Barb Schaaf. She is an outstanding rebounder for her. She sags off well, she anticipates where it's gonna go, has excellent senses where it's going, and she can jump. She is tied up, she's just 5'4", a sophomore. She'll jump against Kathy Watson, who's a 5'10", senior. Gee, how jumped her. And the rebound, uh, or the uh, tip uh, is controlled by Chicago Kristen, and Schaff will bring it down. Here she comes, 153 to go. Once again, shot is up by Fransman, no good, rebound. Pulled out of there by Mary Hobrick in a hurry for Quincy Notre Dame, still on the dribble. Her shot is short. Rebound, Chicago Christian with it, and the traveling is going to be called. Traveling is the call against Debbie Norton. Nice. Donna Vinverlo will inbound it. That is Hobrick, 135 to go. Turnaround jumper Wasson didn't make it. Rebound, pulled down by Nort in traffic, and she's fouled. Debbie Nord is fouled by Kathy Wasson. Debbie Nord let us know what she felt about that call. <laughs> 40 to 31, Chicago Christie by nine with just a minute and 29 seconds to go. This is for the Class A title. The third place game was won by Rocheville over El Dorado. Debbie Nord at the line. Rebound, Quincy Notre Dame. With it is Hobrick. Off it comes to Prine. Down the lane. Shot off the board. Didn't make. Rebound, Watson. Her shot is good. The basket counts and she's fouled. So it's now 40-33. A minute 20 to go. Chicago Christian 40, Quincy Notre Dame 33. Had a lot of animation, a lot of coaching going on here in the sidelines. And at the line is Kathy Watson, who at the moment is 0 for 5 from the foul line. Got that one. 40-34 now. The lead is six for Chicago Christian. Schaff brings the ball down, good dribble. Breaks the press, whoops the ball underneath, layup is good! Judy Camp on a tremendous assist from Barb Schaff. 42-34 now. There is Camp knocking the ball away, knocking it out of bounds that belongs to Quincy Notre Dame. Chicago Christian, oh, they can feel it now. They lead it 42-34 to with just 104 to go and a timeout has been called. And one of your network sponsors is the Calbike Research. We've had a lot of mail concerning our coverage of the boys' A and AA tourneys. We thank you for the many nice compliments. If you have comments, write to Basketball Box 577, Bloomington 61701. We're in the final minute. That is Hubrick with the ball. Benberlo, shot is up, the shot is good. It's now 42-36, a six-point game. In the backcourt, Barb Chad. Gets the ball off to Sue Davies. Are they gonna hold on to it? Let's see what happens here. Barb Schaaf with the ball, 42 seconds to go. I think they're gonna try to avoid drawing the foul so they can keep the clock moving. It's a double team and a foul is called. Picking up the foul is Mary Hubrick of Quincy Notre Dame. And going to the line will be Barb Schaaf. Barb Schaaf. 35 seconds for the game. Chicago Christian 42, Quincy Notre Dame 36. Barb Schaff is what you call a creator. Whenever she does, something comes out of it. <laughs> 43 36. We'll have one more. Riceville finishes third, El Dorado fourth. This is for the title with Chicago Christian just 35 seconds away from the title. She got them both. It's 44-36. Chicago Christian leading Quincy Notre Dame. That is Hubrick for Quincy. 
Benderlo, shot is around and off, no good. The rebound is pulled out of there by Debbie Nort. Gets it off to Sue Davids, 21 seconds to go. The ball is knocked out of bounds. It belongs to Chicago Christian. These tournament games have just been outstanding. The improvement in both A and AA is excellent, but I think the, the biggest key is the improvement individually and the fact that there are not the one or two players, the complementary players are becoming very strong. We got Mark all Schaff five. for the ball, still on the dribble and tied up and foul. Picking up the foul is uh, Mary Harbrick. So 13 seconds to go. The Class A champion is Chicago Christian. In second place will be Quincy Notre Dame. Reichville is third and El Dorado is fourth. There you see Quincy Notre Dame sending in the reserves. What a great gesture on the part of Ivan Brown, giving all these young people a chance to play. Say you've been on the floor in the assembly hall in the championship game of your tournament. It's quite a memory. Now the same thing is happening for Chicago Christian. Ingrid Tegelar is in the ball game. You know what? I think in a week, uh, Debbie and, and her husband are going to see each other. They, he actually coached with them so they could see each other once in a while. <laughs> At the line is Barb Schaff. Rebound is pulled out of there by Darlene Venderlo, and she is fouled. Barb Schaff is taken out of the ball game, and she's a happy young girl, huh? Tremendous ball game. They're poised, they're disciplined. They've executed very, very well against a man to man that they don't see too often. So, Chicago Christian is going to finish 31 and 2 and champions of the state of Illinois in Class A. Both of their losses are to double A schools, Marshall and Sandberg. Shot is up and missed by Darlene Benderlo. Eight seconds to go now. They're counting it off. Three seconds to go, two seconds, one second. This one is all over, and Chicago Christian is the Class A champion defeating Quincy Notre Dame. The final score is 44 to 36. We'll be back now. Stay with us. Uh, we're going to have the trophy presentations and the individual medals to each of these uh, young girls uh, that finished first and second in the tournament. So stay with us. Here's your final. Chicago Christian 44, Quincy Notre Dame 33. One of your network sponsors is Stoffer Chemical Company. The trophy presentations. Let's go to the public address announcer, Tom Trent. Ladies and gentlemen, we direct your attention to midcourt for the presentation of the first and second place team and individual awards for the 1981 Girls Class A State Basketball Tournament. Making the presentations will be members of the Illinois High School Association Board of Directors and administrative staff. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the second place team will be Mr. David Turner of Porta High School in Petersburg who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors, and Mr. Gail Borton of Frankfurt High School in West Frankfurt, who serves the IHSA as a member of the Board of Directors. At this time, please meet the Raiders of Notre Dame High School in Quincy, who finished the 1981 season in second place with a final record of 28 and four. The principal of the school is Sister Joan Fry. The head coach, Ivan Brown. Athletic Director, Al Nepler. Ann Brown, wife of head coach Ivan. Scorekeeper, Sue Trine. Statistician, Mary Kay Obert. Number 20, Barb Nutt. Number 45, Connie Trine. Number 24, Kathy Wasson. Number 23, Donna Venverlo. Number 30, Mary Hovrick. Number 50, Karen Kowalski. Number 31, Kim Hessing. Number 
Number 21, Joyce Benverlo. Number 40, Darlene Benverlo. Number 32, Ann Rakers. Number 52, Susan Wellman. And number 22, Karen Wolf. Presenting medallions to the squad members of the first place team will be Charlene Brimberg of the IHSA, who serves the IHSA as Assistant Executive Secretary, and Mr. Ray Callier of Aurora East High School in Aurora, who serves the IHSA as Treasurer. At this time, please meet the Knights of Chicago Christian High School in Palos Heights, who finished the 1981 season in first place with a record of 31 wins, only two losses. The principal of the school, William Bukema. Head coach, Debbie Ribbons. Manager, Cheryl Crone. Assistant head coach, David Ribbons. Scores, Sandy Brunius. Number 25, Linda Hoogstraten. Number 15, Nancy Griffoon. Number 35, Becky Kickert. Number 33, Chris Smith. Number 14, Ingrid Tegelar. Number 42, Sharon Mells. Number 20, Darlene Franzman. Number 32, Barb Schaff. Number 10, Jenny Halverson. Number 5, Sue Cavanaugh. Number 21, Judy Kemp. Number 30, Sue Davids. And number 22, Debbie Nort. And now the second place trophy will be presented by Dr. Joseph Serchio of Steinmetz High School in Chicago, who serves the IHSA as president of the board. Will head coach Ivan Brown and the captains from Notre Dame step forward and receive your trophy. Mr. Serchio, please. And now the first place trophy will be presented by Mr. John Dowling of Watsika High School, who serves the IHSA as vice president. Well, head coach Debbie Ribbons and the captains from Chicago Christian step forward. Mr. Dowling, please. Yeah, look at the scoring for these two ball clubs. For Chicago Christian, Kavanaugh had one point, Camp six, Nord eight, David's uh, 12. Schaff had 14. Franson had a total of four. For Quincy Notre Dame, Nutt had two. Donna Benverlo had eight. Lawson had nine. Harbrick had four. Uh, Trine had seven. At Kowalski, two. And Hessing, two. The final score was Chicago Christian 44 and Quincy Notre Dame 36. The third place ball game was won by Rushville over El Dorado. And uh, so it's uh, El Dorado in fourth place, Rushville third, Quincy Notre Dame second, and the champions in Class A for the girls this year is Chicago Christian with a victory in this title game by a score of 44 to 36. Join us tonight now for the championship game. That will send Elk Grove Village against Peoria Richwoods. We'll be on the air with that one tonight at 8. For Frank Bassoni and for Ann Penstone, I'm Jim Turpin from the Assembly Hall. Join us tonight at 8. It'll be Elk Grove Village against Peoria Richwoods for the Class AA Championship. You've been watching another Illinois High School Association championship event.
Network hosts have been the Stoffer Chemical Company. DeKalb Bank Research and the more than 750 local DeKalb dealers supplying Illinois farmers with quality hybrid seed. And Country Companies Insurance and the nearly 1,000 Country Companies agents in the state of Illinois. Stay tuned next for a countdown of America's Top Ten. This is WGN Television, Channel 9 in Chicago.